I haven't made any more arrows as of yet. I could probably get onto that. I still haven't developed a reliable way to shape these down or uh, scale them down to whatever sort of size I need. So far I'm thinking that splitting technique might work. Mostly just because these are really too small to uh, work with a saw or anything. That kind of got me to thinking, how might I be able to split wood that I might need for arrows or any other purpose? I don't know, like firewood or something. Combined with the fact that I found this uh, hedging blade, like edging, trimmer, whatever, landscaping thing, I thought maybe I could turn this into an axe head. In order to do that, I went out and found this piece of uh, tree branch that just kind of fell off when I touched it with my sawzall. It was by the dumpster, so I... Yeah. I cut that down to, I want to say... Actually, hang on. Right, so it looks like at its longest point, it's around 30 inches. But I was going for kind of this um, recurvy shape, like you might find on typical axe handles. I thought about cutting this off. I thought I might also remove this little nubby part too. After going at the uh, the bark for some time the other night with my machete, trying to shave most of it off, I figured I don't really want to put too much time and effort into this if I'm never going to actually use it. So uh, I'm just going to experiment with some stuff, see what turns out, what doesn't. And if I do end up uh, being glad making this, then perhaps I will put more energy into it at that point. The basic idea is I will have my axe handle, which is made out of some kind of wood that I have no idea of what. My handle will be attached to this piece of metal, which I imagine already had some kind of edge on it at some point. I think I know where this is from, and I'm pretty sure that these were made for cutting. In any case, I've already hit it with my oscillating tool, and it looks like I can put some kind of refined edge on it. So I think I'm going to do that. This is going to serve as my, as my axe head, just kind of chilling up there. And to fasten the two, I will use some kind of large heavy-duty bolt or something or other to just kind of go right there, fasten the metal to the wood, and hopefully remain in place for me to swing it around my face. I already went through my collection of hardware, and I found a few different bolts that I think might be good candidates for this uh, fastening roll. And I've come up with the, these three guys right here. As you can see some of them fit fairly well into the hole. But in other cases, I might have to uh, yoink a washer from somewhere and kind of get things as close as I can. For now, I think I'm going to go possibly with this guy and run uh, this bolt in between two bits of wood on either side of the blade, as well as the hole that's already conveniently in the blade. Once those are sandwiched together, I'll fasten everything down nice and tight with a nut, possibly add some more washers, and hopefully everything will be put together and useful. Now in case I've not mentioned before, I have not bought any of this. None of this originally came from some hardware store shelf. So I am completely unfamiliar with what any of this is. That being said, all of this is really just kind of a, a jumble of different hardware combinations. And some stuff goes together and some stuff does not. Sometimes I get lucky and I find pieces that fit together. And other times I get kind of stuck with the condition that things are in. And I really just got to kind of work around it. However, in all of my time of working on uh, auto restoration, I've found one clever technique to determine if some different uh, hardware bits are interchangeable. Assuming you're not already familiar, these are bolts. And bolts come in a variety of different sizes. You can see that these are roughly the same diameter. However, we've got these little twirly bits called threads, and we don't know if they're the same or not. Well. To verify that, 
we can actually overlap them and find out if the teeth of the threads or whatever threads themselves actually intertwine and if they handshake well enough then it's safe to say that uh, these are the same pitch of threads and a nut that will fit on one will fit on the other. So a little quick demonstration. So I've got a nut fitting on a bolt. I'm just going to clumsily try this with one hand and it looks like it fits. Now I might need to knock down some of this rust and gunk in the threads. However, it looks like it does kind of fit and stays on. And going off of what I've just compared, this nut will also fit on this bolt, like so. That being tested, I plan on using this bolt, along with a couple of washers, in order to attach to the end of my handle this here cutting blade to be. Now I've got a little bit of cleaning up to do. As you can see, this thing does not really have quite the edge on it. And these threads are quite a bit dirty and not really conducive to attaching this nut as far as I would like it to go. At this moment, I'm going to go start cleaning some stuff up, getting all my pieces together, and then I'll start attaching some stuff to stuff. It's a little bit chilly outside, so I thought I'd focus on work I can do inside first. What I mean by that is I'm going to go through these threads no, these threads, thank you. Clean them up with a little bit of filing, get them uh, nice and carved out, maybe do a little bit of rust cleanup. I've already had this thing soaking in vinegar for a number of hours, but uh, right now this gunk in the thread is really just my main focus. So I'm going to try and spend some time on this, getting that out, and hopefully I can get that nut a little bit further down and tighter onto this bolt. Once I'm satisfied with this, I can start working on the end of that to start tapering it down, cutting a slit in it, and then actually punching a hole through everything that I, I can actually fit this bolt into. Well, there's nothing really mysterious about this next part. I'm really just going to take this file set that I've got, take a needle file, go through the threads on this bolt, and just kind of start cleaning them up until I can get enough clearance to freely move this bolt as far down as I need. I'm going to get started on that now, and I'll come back to you in an hour or three. I've been at this for maybe 45 minutes or so, and I think I'm making progress. Just to recap, I took a, a triangular needle file, and I'm going through all of the threads and really just kind of accentuating that groove that's in every single uh, twirl. To help me do that, I'm using this uh, tiny little cheapo flashlight that I got from Harbor Freight. And I'm looking in the, uh, the profile or the silhouette of the threads of the bolt. And I'm looking for any sort of abnormality that's going to cause this nut to eventually slow down and bind. So kind of uh, indicated right here. Uh, I think it's uh, further on than it was when I started, but as you can see, there's still a little bit of distance to go. So what I'm going to keep doing is looking through all of these threads, filing off any sort of rust or bent up shapes that I might find, and hopefully I can get this nut seated all the way down uh, to the this frozen on nut down here. If you were to get your hardware from the hardware store, this is probably going to be in brand new condition and you won't have to deal with this. However, for some reason, I decided to go with the, the free version that got run over by, I don't know how many truck tires. So this is kind of what I'm working with. It's been maybe an hour to an hour and a half now. And I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what is going on with these threads that this nut won't seat any further. It manages to go on about uh, five to seven turns, but something is 
on these threads that's keeping it from seating all the way down the available threads. I don't know if this is going to be tight enough. Uh, I guess I'm just going to have to work with what I got. Now what I could do is just try to force any sort of uh, binding up with uh, some extra leverage on either side. But unfortunately, this is the largest socket slash wrench type thing that I have. And I don't have anything that's big enough to clamp on this side and counter rotate it. So unfortunately, I can't force this nut on any further than it can get on with hand tightening. Since I've already spent uh, an hour and a half on this, I think I'm going to just uh, move on to something else. Now, speaking of something else, I had in mind to take this uh, handle, since it's already kind of a uh, curvy shape, really just drill a slot in this end, and fix my blade, fasten it with a bolt, and then throw an edge on the blade and hopefully have some kind of uh, successful chopping utility. The first uh, order of business I did was to make sure that, uh, well, really just to try and sketch out a line or some basic idea of what kind of cuts I wanted to make on the end of this. I first tried to eyeball the cut or the channel that I wanted to cut based on, you know, the, what the, uh, the curvature of the piece of wood looked like. And that ended up being a little bit uh, kind of slanted and off-center and my blade would have stuck out something like this. I think it's probably either like that. So you can see that's not very conducive to operating depending on where your hands are going to be. So instead I took this handle and got a feel for how it might work in operation. I kind of got a feel for what this chopping motion might feel like and as much as I could I tried to point it toward me and align my cut in the same sort of swinging motion that I could. Yeah, so I tried to align my cut in the same sort of uh, general direction as the swinging motion that I anticipate. You can see I've roughly done that with some blue Sharpie. And these outside cuts are going to be things that I'm going to hopefully try to cut off and make a little bit of a, uh, a bevel to get deeper into any sort of cut that I'm trying to make. Now this looks pretty good for the motion that I'm going to be using this for. I'm going to double check my, uh, my markings. I'm going to then start making some cuts into this piece of wood. And then I'll start test fitting some pieces together. I spent some time outside uh, with some sawing and I managed to make a little bit of a groove into the end of this piece of handle. Now it's kind of a happy little accident. The blade of the saw ended up being thinner than the blade of my uh, intended axe handle, or excuse me, my intended axe blade. And this is good because I actually need to work on uh, reorienting this slit because it's a bit crooked at the moment. Uh, it's kind of the result I get from, uh, you know, trying to freehand and eyeball some stuff. And uh, at the same time, I'm trying to juggle a piece of wood and a power tool. That's probably not the safest thing, but it's what I got at the moment. Anyway, uh, I'm going to continue refining this, this cut right here. I'll eventually get it wide enough to fit that piece of metal right there. And then I will start drilling the holes on either side to pass this bolt through. Uh, I'm going to keep coming at it from a couple of different angles and Hopefully at the end, everything will work together nice and neatly. I whitened out and straightened that gap in the end of the handle, and it looks like I can just barely get the uh, the blade to fit in there. It's still a little bit snug in some places, so I might have to do just a tiny bit more sanding to get it to seat all the way. But uh, hopefully right now you can kind of see the, uh, the general idea of what I was going for. So we can just get the handle down there and then the axe blade up there. I'll probably uh, eventually get around to sharpening this to some kind of edge, but I don't think I really need to be considering that sort of complication just now. All right, I've started drilling a pilot hole. See, I've kind of done that on both sides. I did two here just because I'm terrible at alignment with a cordless drill. 
If you were using a drill press or something a little bit more sturdy or stationary, you probably wouldn't have this issue, but whatever. I'm just kind of uh, working with what I got. And now that I've got this single hole, I'm going to gradually start sizing it up until I can fit this bolt through that piece of wood. Okay, as you can see, we're getting there. Hopefully just a few more passes and I'll be all set. It seems like I ran into a little bit of a problem. Uh, I don't think it was lack of foresight. It's just something I you know, eventually discovered and now I'm just trying to work around it. What I'm looking at here is a hole that I've got so far bored through my handle and through my axe blade. My drill bit still managed to fit into my cordless drill. However, I am noticing that the uh, the or this drill seems to be bogging down and actually kind of grinds to a halt, like it's missing the torque. On top of that, I'm actually uh, maxing out the, uh, the available drill bits that I've got. And even if I did have the torque available to drive them, I wouldn't have uh, a big enough drill bit to actually hollow out space for these, uh, these two nuts that I'm trying to affix inside the wood. Just based on the length of these, I would end up having to bury them inside the wood. And that's another problem I'm seeing so far is that with this current bolt, I'm going to have to end up removing a whole lot more material than I feel comfortable doing. So right now, I'm looking through my stockpile, looking at some other options, and I think I'm just going to go with uh, an alternative bolt and nut, if that's what you can call this. This bolt is a little bit smaller in diameter than the other one, and it seems like I should just about be able to fit this in there. I might have to do a little bit more hollowing out. And even though these threads are a little bit mangled, it seems like I won't have to do any sort of filing or refining on them in order to get my nut to engage. If I just do a, a side view, it seems like this is just barely going to protrude, uh, given I flatten out this surface a little bit to allow my, uh, my nut to seat and grab that bolt a little bit more firmly. So in short, uh, I'm going to be doing a small redirection, but uh, other than that, I think I'm almost done in terms of assembling this axe. I spent some time whittling around the holes trying to flatten them out. Again, I don't really have any sort of proper flattening tools or spade bits to make a, uh, a proper recess in this wood. So I really just tried to hack away at it as best I could. You can see I've done that to both sides for the most part, and it's removed a little bit of material. However, now that I'm uh, test fitting this bolt in there, I'm actually kind of wondering if it would be all right for me to just forego the, the nut right there. Now at the moment, there's just the smallest little bit of thread protruding from that uh, the ax head. So the way I can just barely start the thread and get it affixed to the bolt. I've noticed that I don't know if I really even need the nut to hold this bolt in place. Just uh, going back and forth, I actually have to use a, uh, a socket and ratchet set to get this bolt in and out of the wood. The, uh, the clearance is actually that snug. So with this in mind, I'm pretty confident that this bolt isn't simply just going to fall out. Now it seems like it uh, fits in alignment with the uh, the axe head blade, and let's see if I can uh, coordinate myself. I can just barely get under that bolt, so this shouldn't be moving around too much with this bolt alone. I think I'll go finish uh, sanding this down, maybe tidying this up a little bit, and then I'll put this all back together. This little multi-tool is heckin' fantastic. I went outside, I hit this thing with some 60 grit sandpaper and some angry bees, and then I put an edge on it. You can't really tell right here, but uh, that, 
really took off a good bit of material. It put a nice uh, defined edge on it. Overall, it really helped to uh, clean things up for the uh, for the better. I think so anyway. In fact, it worked so well. Uh, I noticed it stopped grinding uh, as quickly as it did when it started. And then I realized I started actually cutting into my sanding head. So that just goes to show you that this thing is actually kind of sharp now. At this point, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my axe blade, put it onto my axe handle, bolt everything down, and then I'll go give it a test chopping. All right, here I am in the alleyway out by my dumpster. Like I said, there's that tree branch that's been sitting there for the past six months. Here's one half of that branch. And there's the other half. I like this.